Viewers at home, have you ever thought about using AI to enhance other AI? This kind of a concept is not new at all, and in fact, today's video is something that I've talked about before. Today, we're going to be using GPT-4, the language model by OpenAI, to enhance our mid-journey generations. And in the past, I was developing my own prompts for the GPT OpenAI language models, so essentially do an input-output. But for the first time, someone's actually done all of this work for me in the form of a chat GPT plugin, and that's actually pretty cool. And I'll be honest with you viewers, in my opinion, Midjourney is really best suited for the land of AI image exploration. Because Midjourney will ignore some of the words in your prompt sometimes at the sacrifice of a higher aesthetic pleasing image. At any rate, viewers, let's dive in. Viewers, this is the main plugin that we're going to be using today. Literally, the only description here from the plugin store is generate photorealistic prompts for Midjourney. I don't know what secret sauce they're working with the background, but they're using GPT-4 to generate Midjourney prompts. Essentially, they're giving GPT-4 all the information like what the different double dash Midjourney parameters mean, and essentially the rundown on how to prompt Midjourney because it seems to do a pretty good job. It's really easy to use. All you have to do is prompt GPT-4 with the plugin enabled. Literally just tell it to create a Midjourney prompt about whatever you want. And there's actually a very cool exploratory aspect to this. I can be super vague and it's going to use its knowledge of Midjourney to transform my basic idea. So I simply said goofy elephant and we'll see what it produces. As you can see, it's using photorealistic here. It goes in and then gets our prompts from photorealistic. As you can see, the prompts for Midjourney are very, very long and it, it goes in detail. Again, it is photorealistic, so it will try to make everything look like a photo, which in my opinion is the main hamperage of this. But we'll try later to see if we can get something a little bit more drawn out of it. But yeah, it goes into lots of detail, talking about how it's reminiscent of Disney's Dumbo, captured in the moment of pure joy, balancing on a circus ball or spraying water from its trunk, hyperrealism, every wrinkle and hair on the elephant's skin visible in high resolution. It even lists a specific camera, a specific lens, and some of the details about the photo. And then it actually, again, gives us parameters such as a 16 by 9 V5.1, which I'm having to remove right now. This thing's not updated for Midjourney version 5.2. Style raw, of course, to get that photo aspect. And then the, uh, the quality settings here. And it does give you two prompts for every ask, essentially. So we'll just start off by putting Goofy Elephant into Midjourney. And then we'll try these two prompts and see which one looks better. All right, viewers, here is our first Midjourney generation. And keep in mind, this is without the ChatGPT plugin enhancement. This is simply just Goofy Elephant tossed into Midjourney 5.2. And of course, Midjourney 5.2, it's a great model. Very good at interpreting small amounts of words. So we get a pretty basic elephant down here in the corner, but this elephant up here is pretty goofy. You know, he's got some goofy clothes on. He's in the middle of the African Sahara. This elephant looks like he's having a time. He's having a goofy old grand time. He's got a big smile. So Midjourney's doing a pretty good job. This one is pretty varied as well. And, you know, obviously it's a very colorful, goofy elephant. I would consider, you know, these three goofy elephants and this is just literally a normal elephant. Let's go ahead and see what our first prompt did. So here is our first enhancement. As you can see, there is quite a lot more detail going on with these images. They are a lot more thought through, I guess you could say, because the AI sort of thought through the Midjourney generation for us and did so in a creative way. Honestly, Midjourney is not really going to give us the photo every single time. So we get something that is photorealistic, sure, but still looks like digital art. And I think that's still good. I, I would not say that's a problem. I'm not always trying to get a photograph. But yeah, there's a lot of detail on all of these elephants. I think they look good. There's a lot more going on in comparison to the images that we saw before straight out of Goofy Elephant. But, you know, there's some consistent bokeh in the background. The elephants are, are generally very consistent. All these Im images have a lot in common with each other. So it did a lot of creative interpretation. I guess you could say these are all pretty goofy elephants. This one's the most goofy down in the corner below. But uh, I think in reality, it just kind of gave us some very detailed creative elephants. Again, though, it is ChatGPT, so I could say these images aren't goofy enough. 
make it more goofy. However, that's only the first prompt that was generated by the photorealistic ChatGPT plugin. Let's see what the second one did. So taking a look at our second prompt generations, I think this fits the bill of Goofy Elephant quite a lot more. I mean, viewers, let's be honest, these all look like different characters from like a Disney Pixar movie, and it's actually really cool. Again, lots of consistency with all of these lights in the background. They're all animated this time. This one's really, really good. Unique characters and a, a lot of fun to mess around with for sure. I would not be able to get this level of detail and creative thought out of just the prompt from Goofy Elephant, no matter how much Midjourney tries. I know Midjourney's got some secret creative sauce they toss in there, but this, man, this is a little bit difficult to compete with, and it's just as easy as typing in Goofy Elephant. I literally just ask Midjourney for it. I gotta say, it rendered out the details quite well, quite well. That's the enhanced quality setting that uh, the photorealistic plugin tossed into the prompt. Really, really nice work. I really like these much better than the first one, I think. And taking a look at our original Goofy Elephants, I mean, these are all kind of bland, where the, this is super creative. I would much prefer this over this. It's pretty much the same amount of work to go all the way up to this level because of that prompt. Here is another example that I tried earlier. I wanted a tabby cat, but make him a pirate. If we just ask Midjourney for a tabby cat pirate, this is what we will receive. It's about what you would expect. There's actually a lot of variation in all these images, and they look pretty nice. Not really too much to complain about, to be honest. However, with the prompt enhancement, we don't really know what we're missing out on, because check out the detail in these. Again, we've got that 16 at 9 aspect ratio that it's so fond of, but we have a lot more detail. The images are a lot more dramatic and thought through. Like, these are these are still really good images, but this almost seems like something we'd get out of Midjourney V6, for example. It's like a nice little bump upgrade of creativity and quality. Just because this thing knows how to prompt Midjourney better than my lazy bum. I'm just going to type Tabby Cat Pirate in, and this thing is going to generate a whole string of words that uh, generate nice stuff. Especially like this one with the pause and everything, tons and tons of detail. Really, really impressive stuff. I mean, this looks like a quality mid-journey generation, some professional. People on Fiverr will charge an arm and a leg to develop prompts like this for you. If you don't know how to use mid-journey, if you're new to using it, this is kind of a godsend. And we've got the second prompt here that it generated, and this is a lot more photorealistic. This is like a real photo of a tabby cat, but these are still really nice. Very, very high detail, super realistic. Actually looks like a, a little pirate cat on sunset. You know, not really animated or anything like that. It looks like someone might have dressed a cat up. It's, it's very surreal, actually, to see images like this. Kind of like the dogs playing poker, I, I guess you could say. That, that classic idea. Either way, though, yeah, it definitely looks like it was all shot on a camera lens, bokeh balls in the background, and a, a sharp, clean image of a cat. Still a heck of a lot better than our original renditions or basic ideas with just a few words. Really fun stuff. So let's go back here and think this through a little bit deeper. Because we are talking to an AI chatbot, it has some level of intelligence. We can actually harness that to our advantage here and say, come up with the entire idea of the prompt for me. I just want these emotions conveyed. You know, maybe something a little bit more out there and drifty, like we, we don't know what we're going to expect, that you can kind of turn it into a game, like I am literally searching through the, the world of AI and seeing what it imagines for me. Create me a mid-journey prompt that conveys the feeling of loss, hopelessness, and sadness. So we're just giving it three emotions, essentially. And I know they're not very good emotions, but we can try this with good emotions. I'm just starting with the bad ones. All right, it's going to spit, spit out some prompts here. A desolate landscape, barren and devoid of life. The ground is cracked and dry. Oh my gosh. This is actually kind of a trope almost, like the lone tree sitting in the middle of the image. Uh, and you can see it's going back to its roots of using the, the Canon camera with the same 50 millimeter lens. Let's see how this holds up in Midjourney. So I simply just put into Midjourney the feeling of loss, hopelessness, and sadness, and this is what it produced. All people, surprisingly, and they seem to be experiencing all of those feelings. You know, it's very desolate. It's it's creative. This is classic Midjourney. This is what you expect out of Midjourney. And here is the far more detailed idea of loneliness from the photorealistic ChatGPT plugin. 
Again, we've got that desolate tree in the middle. It came up with that singular idea of the cracked ground and the destroyed ground. Overall, pretty good little generation. Definitely conveys those feelings. Again, this is sort of a trope, though. I have seen these sort of generations before, actually. The second prompt was a little bit more creative. This is what we got from the second one, and we've got a lone figure somewhere in all of these images, and he's just sort of insignificant against the vastness of the sea and sky. We've got the ocean all in these prompts, and it's just a, a gray, desolate photo. Dramatic and intense, color palette that is dark and stormy, lots of these little ideas it tosses into the prompt that Midjourney tries to include. Let's say we didn't like these images. We could actually ask the AI to change it up because, again, this is a chatbot. So I'm going to say rewrite them, but in a finger painting style and make them all close ups. And right there, it just spits them out for me. All right, here is our first image. Uh, you might be a little bit confused. Where's the tree? Well, it actually decided to omit the tree from the prompt and now is just trying to create a detailed image of the, the cracked earth. I said the style of finger painting, which is definitely in the prompt, but Midjourney just decided not to include any finger painting really inside of it. I mean, if we look close, maybe there's something. I don't really see much though. Overall though, I actually like the detail of these images. I think it's pretty cool. So this really isn't the plugin's fault. It's just Midjourney's fault that uh, it doesn't want to do finger painting. This one looks a little bit more like a painting though. And this again is the rewrite of our second prompt with the dark and stormy swirling sky and everything. I think these actually look better than the first ones. And uh, yeah, they convey that feeling of loss and hopelessness very well with the dark and stormy color palette. Very nice, very nice stuff. Good job, Mid Journey, on the second one, especially this one. I love the brush strokes that can be seen in the sky there. Yeah, you can sort of slowly adjust your prompts over time by actually just chatting with the chatbot AI. Now, if only Midjourney had an API, we could integrate this whole process right inside of ChatGPT, so I don't have to go back and forth through Discord, but Midjourney, they, they just won't give us the API. Where is it? All right, now we're gonna go for a creepy scene that looks like found film footage of a terrifying sea creature. Midjourney classically is not very good at these types of prompts for some reason, so we're gonna see what this thing can come up with. And also, I mean, these are all prompts you could use in other AIs. It doesn't have to be Midjourney. It just happens to include all of these dash dash parameters for the use in Midjourney. And now it's it's coming up with some extra stuff here, emerging from the depths of the ocean, barely visible through the murky water, every scale and tentacle of the creature captured in high resolution. So the found film footage typically isn't high resolution, but again, we can account for this. Vintage Super 8 camera, there we go. Further enhancing the authenticity of the found film footage. Okay, good work. Again, the chatbot, you can just prompt it a certain way to adjust things. Very, very nice. I love that. It's a very good way, actually, of interacting with Midjourney, going through this chat GPT bot that understands the intricacies of it. It's a little bit easier, honestly, in my experience. This might be my go-to method from now on, unless I'm trying to do something very, very specific. But, honestly, I wouldn't use Midjourney for very specific images anyways, unless maybe it's a, a photo of a person or an animal or something. Honestly, Midjourney isn't typically good at this found film footage stuff, so... We can try these prompts with Bing Image Creator, which is very good at it. This was literally just a creepy scene that looks like found film footage of a terrifying sea creature. And uh, yeah, I mean, Midjourney gives us some basics. This one looks really, really cool. But Midjourney almost can never produce this effect for some reason, because it's always trying to do clarity and beauty, which makes it not very accurate at stuff like this. But these all look pretty cool, just straight out of V5.2. If we move on to our first one, though, we get a little bit of... Uh, more detail and variation in our creatures. This one is absolutely horrifying. I would not want to see that come after me. Um, but yeah, they're all sort of underwater. This head is pretty terrifying. Like that is like a haunted head just emerging from the milky depths of the ocean. That's terrifying. Either way, I think there's definitely an enhancement from these basic Cthulhu looking creatures. These are a little bit more fun. And then we've got these ones as well. This one is super detailed of like this nasty eye. These are really, really cool. This is terrifying. I got some like haunted skull creature. Not sure what this is. And then this one's pretty cool. They look more like they're from horror movies rather than just than like found film footage. So we'll see what Bing generates with the same exact prompt. And viewers, this is why we love Bing. Bing really can push out that horror 
found film footage vibe. I plan on revisiting Bing Image Creator because it is so fantastic at a number of things that Mid Journey just never could hope to do because it's so focused on aesthetic pleasure. Like, this is creepy. You're not exactly sure what it is, but there's some detail in there. It's like the right amount of just horror. I love this kind of stuff where it's just like a hand. Is that a person? We don't really know. It looks like the found film footage. Really awesome stuff, Bing. And here is the second prompt. This might even be better. You click on these full high resolution ones. It's just kind of terrifying and eerie. Like you have no idea what it is. It's, it's just terrifying. I love stuff like this. Great work, Bing. Yeah, if you guys ever needed a chance to jump on Bing, now is, is your time. This is like a new version of Dolly that they use in Bing Image Creator, and also it's pretty much free. You get like 100 gens a day. Anyways, viewers, overall, this is a really nice way to interact with AI image generation models as a whole. It's a pretty nice plugin. Go give it a shot. Let me know how it goes, viewers. And it's basically completely free as long as you have ChatGPT+, Plus, which I'm sure a lot of you already do for that sweet, sweet GPT-4. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Check out my Discord server and my other videos, and goodbye.